Chapter 1. Successful people are those who never stop seeking opportunities to learn. Very little is taught about life in formal education. What you're taught in class is how to become effective in your chosen field. But every adult will agree that you need more than formal education to succeed in life. It's necessary to pass through high school and even college if you're interested. But the point is, you need to go beyond all those to seek the wisdom that will help you in real life. Naval Ravikant has dedicated a good chunk of his time to studying, thinking, and researching matters of life, which has made him wise and taught him how to succeed in the modern world. Fortunately, you're about to immerse yourself in his wealth of wisdom. This summary contains advice that will save you years of confusion and struggle. If you keep the lessons to heart and practice them, they're guaranteed to keep you ahead of the pack. So brace up as you go through all the chapters in this summary. Don't be in a hurry. It's okay to take several days pondering the ideas that stand out before moving on to the next chapters. Understanding is more important than speed. This might sound counter to the culture that says you should read 52 books a week. What's important is not what you read, but what you assimilate from your reading and act upon. If you can only read 5 books, then change your life in a year. You're better than someone that read 100 just for the sake of it. If I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Isaac Newton Chapter 2 Hard work is insufficient in itself to make you rich. When you ask the average Joe what someone needs to do to get wealthy, the answer you're almost certain to get is work hard. But if you ask the people who are truly wealthy and have attained some level of financial freedom, they'll tell you they didn't get there by sheer hard work. Don't mistake it. Hard work is an essential ingredient. But you can be grinding hard at the wrong thing. For instance, you don't expect to get wealthy working in a restaurant for $20 per hour no matter how much you slave for it. If you work really hard at that job, the best you can get is a fairly comfortable life. In essence, knowing what to work on to bring the wealth you desire is more important than imbibing hard work as a virtue. The most guaranteed way to get wealthy is to focus your energy on doing the things that have made others wealthy. With that said, let's consider some factors you must add to hard work if you're going to create wealth. Don't trade your time for money. How many employees do you know who create wealth just from their salaries? You probably can't count five. Any employee who wants to get wealthy must create additional income vehicles that make money on their own. This brings us to point number two. Own a stake in a business. If you can't build businesses from scratch, you could partner with others as a co-founder or become a shareholder in a fast-growing company. Make yourself rare. Average people are rewarded averagely, but truly exceptional people will command their fees. A simple cheat for getting wealthy is to become extremely good at what you do. Be so good, they can't ignore you, as author and modern thinker Cal Newport will often say. Escape competition through authenticity. Eric Jorgensen to reiterate, the three most important questions to ask when you set out to build wealth are what to do, what to do it for, and when to do it. You can't go broke if you provide what society needs at just the time it needs it. It may take some time before you figure this out, but start now. Start thinking and studying. You'll see. Chapter 3. Judgment is the rightful application of wisdom to external problems. Judgment is scarce, costly, and vital. You're almost guaranteed to succeed in life if you develop your judgment skills. Wisdom is the ability to see the long-term consequences of decisions before you make them. Applying this wisdom to solve external problems is what's referred to as judgment. Like wisdom, having good judgment in one area of your life doesn't mean you have it in other areas. You have to consciously develop it for the areas you think are important to you. For instance, being good at making business decisions can earn you wealth but it doesn't automatically mean you won't suffer in your relationships. Wisdom is not generic. It varies for different areas of life. Thankfully, judgment is like a muscle, so it's something you can develop with time if you're serious about it. Here's how to do it in a few easy steps that you can write down on a piece of paper to go over from time to time. Know the basics. To become an authority in anything, you have to understand its foundational truths. You can't be good at math, for example, without understanding simple arithmetic. The same applies to all areas of life. If you want to be a really good marketer, go back to the basics and master them well. Understand buying psychology, customer behavior, the interplay of market forces, and all that stuff. Listen to the opinions of others. When you want something to work in a particular way, it's easy for your judgment to be clouded. This happens all the time and for all decisions. 
But a classic example everyone can relate to is what happens in romantic relationships. When you're dating someone, you want to be with them forever. You hardly see the flaws in them. Your friends may be pointing to obvious red flags in the relationship, but you're blinded because you want things to go a certain way. This is why it's important to surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to tell you the truth. When you're stuck between two situations and one has long-term benefits with short-term pain, while the other has short-term gain with long-term pain, go for the former. You'll find that your brain resists the option with short-term pain. Ignore those signals. They're just a part of your biological protection system. If you don't know whether to say yes or no, the answer is no. Chapter 4. Unfulfilled desires are the primary reason people suffer in life. There are so many unhappy people in the world. Not surprisingly, the 2020 pandemic has also skyrocketed the global rate of unhappiness. According to research conducted by NORC at the University of Chicago, the percentage of happy American adults dropped from 31% in 2018 to just 14% in 2020. Look around you and you'll see a lot of unhappy adults. You're probably also unhappy about something in your life right now. This begs some questions. What is the cause of unhappiness and how can adults live happier lives? This chapter will attempt to provide answers to these questions. First things first, let's talk about what it means to be happy. There's unfortunately no single answer to the meaning of happiness. People define it differently based on their unique life experiences. Some say it is a state of flow, and others say happiness is when you feel absolute peace. However, Naval Ravikant sees it as the absence of desire. Unhappiness is caused by having unfulfilled desires. When there are no desires, we can't experience unhappiness. It's impossible to live without having desires, right? Our desires and passions are among the things that keep us alive. Be it as it may, Naval recommends people streamline their desires to just a few. That way, they can easily identify the sources of their suffering. Happiness is not a feeling or an experience. It's a choice you make. One of the most important decisions that will guarantee your happiness is deciding not to compete with others. Life is a single-player game. You're not up against anybody. Focus on being you and stop comparing your life with others. Many people will significantly boost their happiness levels if they heed this advice. It's also critical that you reduce your screen time. Social media has made life more competitive than ever before. You can't scroll for so long without seeing people who seem to have better lives than you. A good way to avoid this is to simply reduce the amount of time you spend aimlessly surfing the web. Other habits to cultivate include meditation and gratitude journaling. If you have nothing in your life, but you have at least one person that loves you unconditionally, it'll do wonders for your self-esteem. Eric Jorgensen Did you know? Gratitude as a habit will improve your self-esteem and mental toughness. Chapter 5. Don't feel sorry about being yourself. You are the most important person to you. Or, let's put it another way. You should be the most important person to you. The work you do and the people around you should come secondary. The reason is simple. If you don't take care of yourself, no one will do it for you. And if you don't, you won't be useful to them the way you should be. For example... You're bound to burn out if you work long hours for an extended period without taking care of yourself. When that happens, you will lack the energy to be there for your spouse or kids. But if you take care of yourself, you'll be healthy and your family will benefit more. Another aspect of taking good care of yourself is ruthlessly following your passions. If you listen to people, you're likely not going to fulfill your dreams. Be careful around those who disbelieve and attempt to frustrate your ambitions. Listen to your gut and make moves accordingly. Taking action is necessary for your growth. You can have the best mentor in the world, but if you don't act on their guidance, you will remain where you are. The same is true about everything you engage in. You have to move past the motivation stage to become determined and committed. Motivation can make you sign up for a gym membership, take a course, or what have you, but it's not enough to make you achieve the results you desire. Life will happen, and your motivation will plummet, but the commitment to a course and determination to get things done is what will keep you moving. Chapter 6. Life is so big and mysterious that you have to define what it means to you and stick to your core values or risk living confused. What's the meaning and purpose of life? That's one big unbound question everybody old enough to think critically has hanging around their necks. We ask it in different ways, but we're referring to the same thing. So, what is the meaning of life and why are we here? 
Religion has attempted to answer these questions. All the religions on earth provide their unique answers to them. And it can be confusing sometimes because the views are slightly different from religion to religion. There's no direct answer to the meaning of life. The main reason is that nothing anyone says will make sense to you. Your experiences are unique, so you have to define what life means to you. One other thing is to be sure about your core values. Our lives change from time to time, but our values are what make us predictable. Determine a set of values that is important to you and uniquely align to your purpose. Then stick to it. These values will define you. Your core values tell people the sort of things to expect from you. Some values are common, while others are shared among just a few groups of people. Few are personal. Values such as honesty, giving, and the likes are common among most people. But things like abstaining from certain foods and clothes are rare values that not many people have in common. Conclusion The past is gone, and the future is an illusion, so all we have is the present. Now, not yesterday, not a minute ago, not the next five minutes, now. When you understand this, you will learn to practice awareness. Most of us live very distracted lives. We're constantly multitasking and thinking back and forth between the past and the future. However, none of that matters. All they do is sap our mental energy. So learn to practice consciousness. Be fully involved in everything you do, but do one thing at a time. It will improve every area of your life. Your judgment and money-making ability will increase because you'll become open to better opportunities. We started this summary by talking about wealth creation and then judgment, happiness, self-care, and philosophy. The bedrock for all of these is the quality of your thoughts. Naval is a lifelong learner, and he never gets tired of advising people to read books. When asked what the most critical advice he passed down to his children was, reading was the first thing he mentioned. Cultivate a healthy study habit. Read everything you can lay your hands on. Start with the literary works you like, but don't stop there. There's no such thing as mental junk. You can only get wiser and enhance your judgment. Your thoughts will improve and will show externally in the quality of your life. The reality is life is a single-player game. You're born alone. You're going to die alone. All of your interpretations are alone. All your memories are alone. You're gone in three generations, and nobody cares. Before you showed up, nobody cared. It's all single-player. Eric Jorgensen Try this. Set time daily to read personal development books. Start with the areas you're interested in, then move to others. You can find a ton of interesting books in the Headway Library. Some similar summaries you can start with include Think Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, The Education of Millionaires by Michael Ellsberg, and The Intelligence Trap by David Robson.